Week 21, Day 3, Friendliness. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about my hometown. I was born and raised in Idabel, Oklahoma, a small town right in the corner of Oklahoma, Texas, and Arkansas. It's about 12 miles from Texas and 18, 19 miles from Arkansas, and right in the corner, right down at the foot of the Kaimishi Mountains, Best place in the world to be raised. I don't know if you've ever been to Idabel. If you've never been there, uh, where do you vacation? But it really is a great place. And I loved Idabel. And I didn't realize how great a place it was until I left. And I, I left when I was 18 years old, and I actually didn't go back for 48 years. But I realized how great it was. Now, the story today is friendliness can be developed. <clears throat> When the government <coughs> forced integration of the public schools, <coughs> Idabel had two high schools, an all-white gray high school and an all-black Booker T. Washington high school. The town itself was divided by railroad tracks. The west side was black, the east side was white. Our exposures to others of a different color were almost non-existent. Idabel is probably 30 to 35 percent African American, 30 to 35 percent Anglo, and probably 30 to 35 percent Choctaw Indian or Native American, one of the two. The first year of integration was going to be my senior year. Now you have to, <coughs> excuse me, you have to picture this. How many circumstances that I had where I had to deal with somebody of a different color. Maybe two times in 18 years, and it was for that length of time. We didn't play baseball against each other. I mean, we didn't do anything. It was like it was two completely different towns. Now, there's, I think there's 300 and something students there at Idaville High School. So when they integrated, and I have no idea if they did this on purpose or not, but they only brought a small group of students from Booker T. Washington the first year. But the students they brought were without a doubt the cream of the crop. I mean, these guys that they brought over there were the best athletes, the prettiest girls, the smartest guys. And so when you start developing an opinion of another race and you're talking about an Edmund Hooks, who's now a, a doctor in Oklahoma City, and at that time was probably one of, if not, the smartest kid in our class. You've got a Michael Blackwell, who's the president of a veterinarian college in Tennessee. You've got the guy that, that became really one of my three best friends in the world, Donald Ray Burris, who was a tremendous athlete, great football player, and a great leader. You had Joy Hill, who was as pretty a girl as it was in the, in the school. Now, our definition of the other race came from these guys we spent every day with. So when Idabel integrated and brought everybody together, it was a very positive thing because there was such a friendliness between the two races. I don't, I don't think Idabel has ever had a racial problem. I may be naive. I think they've had some situations where uh, the, the one group or the other felt like that they were mistreated or they were abused, and I think that's true in every, every town and every society you have. But I think overall, the main reason was we had a definition of a different color. I went to college, and of course in college you're in with every different race that there is, especially if you're playing college football. And I will never forget my senior year, 
our <clears throat> coach called me and the other captain. The other captain was Clarence Hudson. I was the captain on offense, and Clarence was the captain on defense. <clears throat> And Clarence was an African-American from Medill, Oklahoma. And he called us in and he said, when we go on road trips, we want you guys to room together. And we said, okay. But we didn't understand what he was asking. We didn't understand anything significant about it. We just, we actually believed, and this how naive or dumb or whatever you want to say we were, we thought it was because we were the captains. But we figured it out after we would go to these civic club meetings and the head coach would get up and say, yeah, this is our defensive captain, Clarence Hudson, and this is our offensive captain, Dennis Parker, and they're going to, they room together and made a big deal out of it. And we finally realized that all of those people in, the, in that town that we were playing college football in were not used to a white and a black rooming together. And, and it, they thought it was a big deal. Well, to us, it, it was nothing. It, it was just very simple. Clarence Hudson was as class a person, as good a friend as I ever had in my life. Still is. Lives in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Helps my grandson. So, you know, being friendly, you develop the quality of friendliness. You, you don't start out with maybe somebody of a different race or a different religion or something. You start out and you, you should not have any opinion. And then they, their actions should help you determine your friendliness. But you begin by being friendly. And they've got to change you for that to happen. Look at question number one. What does it take to be your friend? What does it take for you to be friendly? You have to work to be friendly? Or is it natural? Number two, why must we eliminate prejudice in, or, prejudice in order to develop friends? You can't begin by prejudging someone, their color, their race, their religion, their socioeconomic background. You begin by being friendly. You develop the quality of friendliness, and you will develop friends. See you tomorrow.